I think you have to wait one year before you can run for school committee. <laughs> uh, having <coughs> that aside now, Andy, you, you indicated that, that there were some questions, and last time we met a week ago, there were some, and I think that is awesome as well. It's, 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 the, it's not just the, the right of the people in the community, it's part of their job to question everything that the elected officials in this community do, um, and, and I think it's wonderful that they came up with very, very much insightful questions for us to have to get back to them with answers. There were some documents out front that were trying to um, give some additional information to, to clear up some of those questions, and tonight there'll be some information given to reply to those questions as well as some that came from all of you. So without me saying anything else, I, uh, I want to turn everything over to Dr. Andre. He is the one with all of the information that you'll want. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Silva. Thank you, Mr. Tiska, uh, for allowing us to present on the second night once again. Um, so I just want to take a, a brief moment to remind everyone why we're here of our district goals and vision. Again, our, our five-year strategic plan is, is about creating vibrant learning uh, environments, engaging families and communities, preparing uh, for college and career uh, pathways, personalizing learning for the whole child, and supporting the ongoing development of excellent educators. So the, our budget tonight supports our strategic plan in moving forward. <clears throat> At this time, I'm going to bring up uh, Pauline Silva. There was a few questions that, as Mr. Silva alluded to, that were asked last week, and I, I agree that there were great questions um, that we did not address, and we're going to take a couple minutes just to address it today at a very high level. We don't want to get into the weeds, but I want to ensure that, um, the community's um, confidence in us, as well as the JFC, that we do know where the, the money is going, where it's spent. Um, and there's three major areas. What, what is our, our fund balance, especially at the e end of the year? Why is there a reduction in state aid? And a very quick, at a high level, a comparison to our neighboring district. So again, I thought there were fantastic questions um, from, the, from the audience that I think the district should um, address tonight before we give our executive summary. Ms. Silva? So the first question, this year the district requested $53 million, yet there is a budget balance of $3 million. The simple answer to that is most of our budget is made up of um, purchase of contractual obligations. And by that I mean uh, salaries and benefits that are for folks that are under contract. Purchase orders are drawn for supplies and materials, equipment, and purchase services such as transportation and tuition name a few. That represents about 48 to $50 million. The remaining expenditures, while budgeted, are more variable throughout the year and include substitutes and other employees at will, such as our tutors, our safety techs, and class overages, and other end-of-the-year payouts, and as well as associated payroll tax. Not encumbered, but certainly committed are the $1.35 million debt service payment that's to due April 1st, end of year equipment refurbishment such as athletic helmets and microscopes. So while the report that's on the district website says there's $3 million of a budget balance, please be assured that that's really all accounted for. Okay, so the, I'm sorry that's so small. Um, the question was also raised: Why, at the end of the year, did we have a cash balance of one point? Excuse me, twelve point eight million. The twelve point eight million listed on page seventy one on our financials is for risk assessment information only. Okay, the the reason they they put that there is the fact that only two hundred and fifty thousand is insured by the FDIC. However, 
the financial institution provides us with a collateral, a letter of collateralization to show that, that it is secure, just not through FDIC insurance. And that's just in the notes to the, to the financials. Including that $12.8 million was $2.4 million in outstanding checks. It's also worth noting that we had a payroll dated June 30, so you would expect that at June 30, at the close of business, most of that, uh, the outstanding checks, most of the payroll checks hadn't been cashed yet. 288000 belongs to student activity accounts. We are custodians of the student activity accounts, however, it is not our funds. It's funds held for others. $1.2 million belongs to business-type activities. That's our lunch program and our before and after school daycare. $2.2 million belongs to major grants federal and, and state grants. 580000 belongs to non-major funds. That includes uh, private grants as well as non-major grants. $1.9 million is the end of year payables, including payroll or cumbrance. And basically what that means is goods and services that have been received by June 30, but not paid for because we haven't been invoiced for that yet. As well, 28000 is unearned. That's tuition that we receive in June for the following September. So we can't recognize it as income in that fiscal year. $2.6 million is committed by school committee, school committee policy. That's our 2% for emergencies and our 2% for cash flow purposes. And $1.6 million is assigned 800000 each year for FY18 and FY19. Um, the, one of the handouts at the back of the room and I left on your table here is the pages from the financials that addresses each of those um, items that I've just mentioned to you. One of the questions was, what about housing aid, interest on investments, and in other, in other revenues? In reflecting, I realized that we didn't talk about revenues last time we gathered. Um, and so I would direct your attention again. I apologize for the tiny little um, um, uh, chart there. However, if you go to page nine of the budget book, you'll see the revenue reconciliation. And the first one was housing aid. So we budget housing aid in the gross amount, the 2.5 million, 2.6 million knowing full well it will be offset by $1.2 million in housing aid. We recognize the revenue, so really it's just the net of that, which is about $1.2 million that the district is responsible for. We are reimbursed about 48% on our bonded project. The capital projects, which are those shovel-ready projects, the reimbursement rate is between 63 and 76% that is not included as a revenue stream for general funds. As well, there's categorical state aid. Those state aids which are targeted aid and they're outside the funding formula, such as transportation, high cost special ed, and uh, group housing aid is another one. As a regional, we receive over $1 million a year in transportation aid. Medicaid, we budget about 500000 for reimbursement. Those are services that are provided to our students with special needs. Interest income, um, we invest long-term and short-term. Um, tried explaining that the other day to someone who's a non-mathematician, and it was, went a little bumpy to be sure. But basically, what I do is I watch our, our inflow. So our inflows are probably between four and a half to five million dollars a month, and our outflows are about three to three and a half million. The remainder, remaining amount there, the million dollars, is invested. It's invested long term and short term to account for our outflows. We generally um, budget about fifty thousand. I'm happy to report that at this at this point in time, we will exceed that for this year. And let's just hope that trend will continue. Other revenues include tuition received from individuals, 
Those are students who come to Mount Hope who are not Bristol Warren residents, and we get paid to do that, as well as our um, very successful preschool typical peers program. And finally, the reappropriation of fund balance defined by the school committee to offset the cost of retiree health benefits until FY20 when our debt service payments are reduced by a million dollars. The funding formula. The funding formula, uh, I had a good, a good conversation with my colleague at RIDE, Kristen Cole, who is the funding formula specialist, and I asked specifically why this year, why did it go down so drastically? And her reply to me was, the enrollment is 264 students lower since March of 2011. The change in free and reduced eligibility down 3.6% since FY15 and the state share ratio. The most volatile seems to be in the state share ratio. Higher property values in relationship to the state means lower state share ratios. The formula utilizes rate assessed value, called the E-Wave, to compute a per pupil property value, rolling average, medium family income by community, assessment, and actual home sales data. Again, I gave you a worksheet. Those worksheets were right from, from Kristen to help explain why our state share ratio, as the community becomes more affluent, the state share ratio goes down. Any questions on that? Good evening. Uh, my, my question is the 2% for emergencies authorized by the school committee under your fund balance. Mm -hmm. Have there been times when you've used that in the past? We haven't, but if we did, we would need a way to replenish that. It would have to be built into the next budget. What are some examples where you would use it or request it? In, in our world, it would be, well, just at the, the committee's discretion, but um, if we had a building emergency or even um, a high cost out of district placement for a special needs student. Yeah. So, this, so this year, as you recall, at the uh, beginning of the, the, the fiscal year, we approached the, the town councils um, when there was a freeze in the government, uh, the governor's budget that we came to the town council and said we might have to tap into um, the emergency um, cash flow. So that would be an example. So if there's a reduction in state aid or a freeze in the governor's budget, we would tap into that. Or, um, you, know, you know, God forbid, like a roof collapse or something like that. So we would tap into that. But uh, to Mr. Silver's point that I think it would be a conversation with both town councils if we had to tap into that line. And then in order not to create a structural deficit, that we would ask the JFC to replenish that amount that we tapped into the following year. Mr. Superintendent, I don't know if it's in front of you, but the last sentence Ms. Silva said, I heard it. Can you just repeat it again about the state ratio, that last sentence from the Department of Education on the community aspect and how they, they do that with the affluent? Can you, is that sentence there? I'd just like to hear it one more time. I have nothing here in oh. front of me. Nothing up my sleeve. That's either. why I was looking at her yeah. because yeah. I didn't know if she yeah. just. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and this is from Kristen Cole, exactly. not from me. Yeah, I just wanted to hear it one more time. All of this affects the state share ratio. Higher property values in relationship to the state mean lowest state share ratios. Yeah. So just moving along again at a very high level, and I don't want to do a, a, a comparison between Bristol Warren, Barrington, and Portsmouth, but on this slide, you just just a quick highlight that what's um, incorporated into our budget that's not incorporated or as high in our neighboring districts. Um, our payments for retiree, retiree benefits um, are our payments about $2.3 million, Barrington about 800,000, 900,000, and Portsmouth is about 300,000. Debt service, again, as a regional, we have to carry our own debt. 
um, that's over a little over three million dollars, and then our non-public and, and private cost is over two million dollars, and you can see it's it's nearly a million dollars over our neighboring district. Again, those are items that we're obligated um, to pay for. Um, if there is a reduction in in our um, in our request tonight, those those lines won't be impacted. So um, those are three big or four big lines, three big lines that our neighboring district um, is definitely an outlier. So if, when people ask what's the difference between Barrington and Bristol Warren, those are three lines to to look at. So the reason why we're here tonight is to request. Um, a 3.9% increase over last year, which is a, a translation of approximately $2.1 million on our bottom line and a request of $3.231 million to, to the local contribution. Again, reiterating from last week, the, the elephant in the room going back to 2010, we knew what state education was going to be reduced or state aid to uh, the towns we're going to be reduced approximately $704,000 a year from 2012 through 2021. Over the years, we can see what the, the trends were in the reduction of the state aid and the change of the local contribution and the impact to the district. As I stated last, last week, there has been already a number of reductions, reorganization, redesign since 2011 in order to meet the needs from year to year. Again, in our 3.97% increase, we are looking for <coughs> the increases in the following areas. Educational support, educator support, a contractual um, benefit rate adjustment, a contractual trans transportation and other fixed costs, our safety and security equipment, and that's upgrades to cameras in our schools. And lastly, it was our technology implementation. And as I reiter as I stated last week, technology is more than technology, it's about supporting the culture. It's our professional development, it's our curriculum instruction, it's, it's our infrastructure. It's about personalized learning for each and every student in each and every classroom. As, as Mr. DePasquale well mentioned last week, we are looking at multi-year planning. Back in January, we had a, a, a slide, this is the exact slide that we looked, we looked at, and we were looking at our three-year projections, and then the projections to the towns over, over time. Since January, we honed in and refined some of the numbers to get to, to tonight's request. I think what's really important is, again, in that three-year forecast and, and projection, if the 3.97% is not met, what happens to next year? What would that result be? So we know, as, as we've been stating all along, that we have our fixed costs, our obligations. So we can already, going into FY1920, project that our budget is going to be right around $57 million. We know next year that there's going to be a reduction in state aid of approximately $972,000. We also know next year that there's going to be a reduction of $800,000 in our um, assigned funds moving forward. We also know there's going to be a decrease in our expenses to our debt service. So in 2019-2020, we're already down $800,000. So that forecasting over the next three years, I think, is really important on the, the decisions tonight. So however the committee votes, if it's not 3.97, we need to be looking at what's the impact for the next two years. And again, having, having conversations so that we can meet the needs of our students as well as the community. So again, tonight, I'd, I'd like you to take into co consideration the multi-year planning. And again, our public schools grow the greatness of the nation. And we firmly believe in, in public education, supporting and celebrating Public Education Week, that the Bristol schools are a worthy investment. 
Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Andre. <clears throat> I'd like to just um, pause and recognize a couple more people that are here this evening. Uh, Representative Knight, uh, thank you for coming. Um, Councilman, Warrentown Councilman John Hanley, thank you for coming. Bristol Police Chief uh, Canario, thank you. Um, and of course, Mr. Watessa, um, ensuring that we're seen and heard this evening. Thank you. <clears throat> I recognized Wally earlier, and uh, it's good to see you, Senator Filag. Um, I'd like to um, offer the opportunity uh, for members of the public um, to come and speak, to provide comment. Um, it's difficult to answer questions, so I invite you to provide comment for the committee to hear um, uh, this evening. So if you'd like to um, make any comments, please um, walk up to the podium, state your name and your address, uh, and we'd be glad to receive those comments. So please state your name and your, your home address, please, in the town that you live in. Hi, uh, I'm Ryder Ferris. I live at 142 High Street in Bristol. Uh, I'm a junior at Mount Hope High School, and I've been coming to these meetings for, well, as long as I can remember. I love Mount Hope. It has given me countless opportunities to either play varsity sports, participate in theater, or even be elected class president. Now, when you go to Mount Hope, you're a part of the community. One that picks you up when you're down, one that helps make you a better person. In this community, you go and support your friends, whether it be in sports or production or band performance. The community of Mount Hope comes out. Now, when I go to these events, I, I don't see you guys, maybe once or twice, some definitely more than others. But, and, and I get that. You guys are busy. You have other responsibilities. But I see you guys come out to town events, Memorial Day, the Fourth of July parade, and these are all great things, so I know you guys can come out. And knowing and when you're part of the community, you, you have to make it work. You can come out and support even just for the first quarter or the first song. It, it's your job to be part of this community. If you wish to continue to have such a key part in it, you have to come out and support more regularly. You have to show me you care, that you want to see us succeed. I'll be 18 this summer, and I can't wait to do my civic duty and vote for the ones that care and support our school. Thank you. Thank you, Ryder. Welcome. Please state your name and your address. Hi, my name is Janine Councilman. I am uh, live at 18 Ellis Avenue in Warren. And I was here last week. I have become a very interested uh, community member in the events that happen with the Joint Learning Committee. And I want to echo the sentiment that the last speaker expressed, which is that we are all voters. And what happens today is not just a single act of voting. It has consequences throughout our community. And I will let you know that I'm really blunt. I'm going to remember this because I am very alarmed over the years of reductions. And, un and we've had pretty good understanding that the state formula is going to have these long-term impacts. So as a community, I am urging Bristol and Warren to think more collaboratively so that we can have uh, uh, requests by our superintendent that are fully met. In his current request view, I saw a number of decreases where he's already made predictions to try to anticipate the committee's reaction. So let's, not, let's try to help that so we don't see further reductions and encourage high school personal opportunities. Please come up to the podium. We're not, we're taking comments, please. Yes, yeah, thank you. My thank name you. is Jennifer Massey Devine. Um, I live at 55 Wapping Drive in Bristol. I was a graduate of Bristol High School. So I attended school in this town before we regionalized. And back then I remember that there were talks of cuts for education before we regionalized, just for the town of Bristol. And the people that were hurt the most were kids like me who 
took the most challenging classes I could teach and, you know, the higher levels. And that was upsetting because they were going to cut the highest level classes and students like me were hurt. Like, my parents were both, you know, the average ordinary family. They weren't rich. My public education is the education that I got. I think you guys need to dig deep and figure out ways to get this money for the schools. I don't want to see my children, who have such amazing opportunities, have those opportunities taken away. They work hard. We make education a very big priority in my family. Um, I'd hate to see my kids not have the opportunities that they could have, that, like in Barrington or Portsmouth. I mean, it, it, we need to make this a priority for our kids. They're rising stars. And I've been to a lot of events recently with the schools. These kids are amazing. I went to all bands last night. It, it was fantastic. I went to a fundraiser for the National Junior Honor Society. So there are kids in the middle school who are just rising stars. And they raised almost $2,000 with this Slap Together fundraiser to help educate and to help push. Um, Dig deep. We, we, we live in a university town. There's renters everywhere. I live behind some. Tax those people. Tax people who can afford it. Tax people who don't live here year-round. Tax them higher than you would tax us. I think another person said, give a luxury tax. Or name it something. But there are people that live here three months a year. Tax them more. I live here year-round. I, I, <laughs> I push to make ends meet. So... I don't know, just dig deeper. I'm asking that you dig deeper and just please help fund this. I don't think this should be a battle we have to do every single year to fund our education. It's embarrassing. Our neighbors in Barrington and Portsmouth, like, this isn't an issue for them. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Good evening. Uh, of course you can. Yes, please. Uh, Brian Wilner, uh, 85 Kingswood, Bristol. I just actually wanted to throw out there a nice job to Mario, because kind of from my point of view, most guys in his position say, like, go for 6%, and you kind of knock him down to the 3.97. I think he's actually put forth what he really needs, and I, I, I really don't think that there's much debate beyond that. It's just, I had a week to go through the numbers, and it's all very reasonable stuff he's asking for, so I really don't think there's much beyond that. Thank you. Thank you. I make a motion to fund at 3.97%, $56,446,876. Second. So we have a, a motion and a second on the floor. I'd like to entertain discussion. I'll start, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Andrade, uh, the school committee, and most of all, um, the parents um, and the educators for their involvement, especially the parents uh, this year, which is part of Dr. Andrade and the, school, the regional school district's strategic plan. Since I've been on the Joint Finance Committee uh, going on six years, uh, I, I really appreciated the subcommittee back from 2012 because a lot of what they recommended has been tried to work on collaboratively between the two towns, the school department, uh, to achieve those things. And I think that's what comes up with the strategic uh, action plan. And because we talked about um, this session about being prepared going forward and the needs of the schools. And to understand those needs and to address the action plan that has been set forth even last year, the same initiatives of, let me just go through them in case some of you out there don't know what it is. It was on the board. Is number one, creating a vibrant and safe learning environment. Uh, we just addressed the needs of our public safety here in our schools. Um, we're addressing the uh, condition of our schools and the nurturing environment of what is necessity to give our children in that aspect. 
Number two, engaging family and community as partners. I just mentioned this year, I, I noticed a lot of involvement, um, more meetings with the parents, more engaging um, topics that they want to understand. Uh, the streamlining of a budget uh, is such as we should be known. Um, and I, I have to commend um, Dr. Andre that it was more defined to Pauline on a line-by-line -line item. Um, you know, it, it, there, there are knowns. I mean, it's just basic of a fix, the revenues, the expenditures, the deductions, the financial contractual obligations, and the debt service. Those numbers do not lie. So where are the other no numbers that, you know, are just concluded to um, really fully fund a school department? And it is in a vision, but there are different aspects on those line items. I know everybody, I, I, I would just suggest going forward that when we have these conversations for the multi-year plan, is I really think we have to define more of what the monies are applying, almost like it was mentioned, working the budget backwards and applying what we're fully funding when we talk about the technology and the implementation of all the, the, the initiatives we're trying to do and take those big items and really see how that money is being nurtured to our students because that comes with a price and that's what we're after. We already know the contractual, we, we support our educators because supporting the ongoing development of excellent educators. It's been brought up about class sizes, you know, the demands on the overages of, you know, what it costs when the class sizes are large. So what, what's it going to entail? Obviously, if we're going to bring the ratio back to where it should be years ago, you, you need the, the qualified and proper educators uh, part of that staff. Uh, personalizing learning for the whole child. Um, I, I know we have made advancements. Uh, we talk about reductions every year, but whether it be the smart boards, whether it be one-to-one -one ratio for, you know, the equipment our students have. Uh, that should be commended. I, I, I mean, we talk about the trials and tribulations of the reductions, the reductions, fully fund. I, I think if you don't get blue ribbon notice, you don't get the accolade of, like you said, I, I commend you for what you have, what you're, you're dealing with, and we're still making progress with this vision. I think, though, my point tonight is we have to see the money, if everyone cares so much about the money per student, and what we're getting for our future education for our children is really talk about uh, sitting down as a multi-year plan to um, keep this strategy and action plan going and see how that money is being applied um, because the rest of the numbers, like I said, don't lie. Um, and preparing for college and careers, we know the professional development. So I could go on and on, um, but you know, I just want to put a positive that we hear all the negative, but I'm sorry that I might be the only one here that, you know, we're being reduced every year. I'm still proud of this regional school district. I'm proud of the students, I'm proud of the educators, and I'm proud of, you know, being the Bristol Warren Regional School District and, and having the accolades that we have. Can we do better? Of course we can. Um, I heard um, comparisons to other communities. I, I don't think we should compare to Portsmouth because I don't know if many of you know this, that we're on a totally different structural concept in Portsmouth. Portsmouth um, they're a aligned department. So what does that mean? We're told as council members we have to put our joint finance committee hat on and not a councilman hat on. But in Portsmouth, you see, they're a department. So their budgets are actually combined. So if there's a surplus in the schools, the town council actually gets that surplus. They can make decisions like that. It's not set up like that here in, in our community of Bristol Warren. Totally different. So with that said, um, I just want to commend you and just explain um, what I, I've been assessing of how I make my decision going forward. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Committee Member Stewart, Councilman Stewart, um, Councilman Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is, uh, I've been doing this for four years now, and um, from our perspective, uh, it's been a tough four years. Uh, we have worked very, very hard uh, through some difficult budget years in Warren to get uh, back on the right track. We, uh, two years ago, instituted a five-year plan, much like we've been talking about here at these meetings. And uh, we 
that's paid dividends. We've been planning uh, to get to the point that we're at tonight uh, so we can be in a position to support education. Um, I think it's the right thing to do, and I support this motion to fully fund. Thank you. Uh, other discussion, please. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairperson. And thank you, everybody who's here tonight. And thank you, Mario, Dr. and Dave, and your team. Um, I think that everybody who's up here believes that education, the education of our students, of our children, is a priority. I can't imagine anybody sitting here is going to say that it's not. But I think that we need to make that statement and move forward with it. Um, like Councilman Thompson said, we've been preparing for this. We've known what's coming, and we're ready to do this. And um, if we're going to go into comparisons about what we're spending as a regional school district against some of the, these two other regional school districts, we're doing quite well. We're spending, according to the numbers, about $16,364 per student, as opposed to Exeter's West Greenwich and Foster Gloucester, who are doing 19 and 17. So we're, we're, we're spending our money pretty wisely by those numbers. Um, I appreciate the job that our teachers are doing, that our, our school committee is doing, that our administration is doing, and I think we need to put our trust in them and say, good job, we, we're prepared to do so, it's the right thing to do, and we've got to do it. Thank you, Councilwoman Cronin. Uh, Chairman Di Pasquale. Hello. Uh, just to make sure everybody realizes, we're looking at about a 1.7% tax increase in Warren. We feel that the budget we've put together, which fully funds the request this year, is a responsible increase. We're not flush with cash. We are wisely using our reserves this year to invest in our capital projects, and that's going to save us money when because we're not going out to bond. When we, five years ago, set on the course, we took the strategy of setting a reserve regarding how the lawsuit would play out. That was a line item that we taxed the people of Warren at $1.8 million. It was a strategy that some people questioned and uh, looked at as overtaxing. Had we lost, that line item would have been prepared for the decision that we would have disagreed with, but we had created a budget that would have shown our responsible preparation for either way. We're going into a $20 million sewer project, which we will be borrowing that bond. We will not be as well off as we are now. My hope is to set a course that will show a cooperative effort further than talk, but an understanding that the three bodies that are here together will work together. It's not easy to look people in the eye if you don't believe what you're doing. I think being an independent has made it easier for me to look in everyone's eyes equally. I don't have any pressure from any organization or group or committee. I deal with the issues and I sleep like a rock. Tonight I'm here realizing that for five years we've cut this request. Last year, when I said what I said, it was taken out of context. Some people looked at the fact that last year, we also had created a budget representative of a fully funding request. When that didn't happen, some thought I had turned. I did not. I simply did not make that motion first. This evening, you see, 
that we are and have prepared budgets that are responsible and respect the request of our education. Our children are in this system along with our brothers and sisters from Bristol. There is no enemy in this room. There is no opposition in this room. There is a request in this room. I hope everyone sitting at this table with me will look at it that way and not look at it as an opposition or a position of mistrust. I hope we can continue to build, and that's why I'm doing what I've done for the past 16 years. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd invite um, anyone else to be heard if there's any other discussion. Sure. Councilwoman Frella, please. I think that a couple of things. Um, I do appreciate the uh, trying to take a look at the two neighboring communities. We did that without looking at the outcomes, and of course they are very different. I took the liberty of looking at some of the outcomes myself in comparison to many school districts. But that's not really what I want to talk about. I mean, I think what people, you know, unfortunately, for whatever reason, and I'm very disappointed in this, that we did not have the courtesy of even having a presentation of our budget uh, before we had to come and vote on the school budget. That could be a strategy on some parts. That could be timing. But we are within our charter, and our budget process doesn't start until next week. That means that we have not, we have all found out in discussion with our administrator uh, on our own as to where we stand and what our budget looks like, but we've not had the budget presentation that usually takes place or the opportunity to listen to one other department in the town of Bristol and hear what their needs are. And I think it's very, very unfair to those other departments and very unfair to um, the citizens of, of, of our, I'm going to Bristol because that's where I represent. And I think it's, it's just not a good way to do business. So I'm extremely disappointed in that. And it's the kind of thing that this is too important an issue not to vote on. So, of course, I'm going to vote on in it, this issue. But it really, out of protest, I would love to not just to just not vote on it because it is not appropriate at this point in time, in my opinion. Having said that, I also think that people need to realize, like everyone in, in this group says, fully fund, fully fund, we don't care what it costs. But we have people, I know I've had parents of kids who have said to me, Mary, we really can't afford continuous tax increases. But they don't come to this meeting because they're not going to come up here and say that in front of their kid's principal or their kid, the parents of their kid's friends. They'll tell us individually that is the situation. You know, I mean, we, we have a whole variety of people that are trying to remain in their homes. I mean, how much can we continuously tax, tax, tax? I also just want to make one point, you know, because Joe brought it up, the lawsuit. We were hit tremendously hard. We had millions and millions and millions of dollars last year that we had to pay. And our neighboring community more or less threatened us with another lawsuit if we didn't pay the back amount by a certain date. So we have put in millions into, into education. And it's, just, it's, 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 it's a very bad situation that we found ourselves in. But we need to get out. They, they talked about how they had to dig out. We have to get to that point. In, in some degree. And people, I think, really need to understand that. I don't think there's anybody here who doesn't want to fund education. I mean, we are funding education. We're supporting education every time we turn around. Our police department is at every one of these schools, the morning, the afternoon. They're, they're doing patrols around there. We're trying to keep your kids safe. That impacts our budget. There's all kinds of things that we do that, that are helping with uh, whether it's drainage projects that we're collaborating on or whatever that impact the education and the schools in, this community, in these communities. And I just think people are not looking at the big picture of a whole community. And unfortunately, we weren't able to participate in that process, which is usually is underway by the time we take our final vote at the Joint Finance Committee. So that's my comment. If I could. Seven years ago, we cut $1.6 million from our budget. We had a 9.7% tax increase. To say that we did not raise taxes, we have. Correct, you have also. When people in this audience have questioned where the money will come, I said it loud and clear. Budget cuts, 
tax increase or revenue growth. Without revenue growth, you have a responsibility of either cutting the budget or not spending money in any area. It's how it works. We all know that. The sad reality of our situation was, again, not an oppositional position. The distribution was not being adequately set to each town as by law. We weren't mad about what we were paying. There was a disagreement at every level of the court agreed that the distribution by the school department was not being done properly. Ride was forced to adjust it. Let it be known. We've paid what we have been asked to pay. No hypothetical situations or comparisons to others have to be made. I'm sitting here. I did it. We're having a tax increase this year. Why? Because that's what we chose to do, knowing the budget process that we're going through. I do agree it's unfortunate that your calendar isn't timed. I've argued, and Senator Felag spoke with me probably 10 years ago, that it made sense and he encouraged me to bring this issue forward that having a 15-month financial schedule would probably help everyone. Because at the time, when I went to him with his experience and said, Senator, every year the state aid comes from the state and goes right to the school. It's going right past the, the, the towns. I'm setting a tax rate, and yet it goes to the school. That's not proper taxation. He said, spread out the fiscal year. Go further. I think I brought that to the councils at some point. I know we used to have the joint meeting in town. I know Representative Marshall heard that. We were there. He wasn't a rep at the time. We've tried to look at approaches to smooth out the financial hurdles that are always ahead of us. And coordinating our budgeting schedules has always been key. I'm not going to get in an argument tonight, but I'm definitely not going to make anybody think that we haven't participated in our process fairly. We have, and we want to continue, and that's why I'm here. That's why we're all here. Uh, Administrator Contenti, please. For yours. Thank you, Chairman. I, uh, I just feel compelled to say that I want to move forward. And uh, the lawsuit was settled move forward and everything in life is about moderation and uh, I think that the fully fund um, knowing my municipal budget knowing my department knowing the challenges in town with uh, public safety with the infrastructure it's a complete picture for a healthy community you need a complete picture um, again moderation um, and a strong commitment to what's most important to us to fully fund almost a 4% increase, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't agree on that. I think over the long haul, over several years, a, a good modest commitment that's reasonable is the way to go. So I just want, want, want the public to know where I stand, and I've heard quite a bit that we're uh, residents, we're taxpayers, we're voters. I am also, and I have young children, one in the system, and I have others going into the system. I'm a product of the public school system, and my children will be, hopefully. Um, so I, I have a lot at stake here, too, much like the other members here. And it's not an easy place to be, but we have to remember everything that we have gained and everything that we have to lose. So it's a, it's a balanced approach, and everything should be in moderation. That's all I want like to say. Thank you. Thank you, Administrator Contenti. Any further discussion on this motion? Um, the, uh, the, the motion on the floor is to uh, fund the school department with its requested 3.97% increase uh, from the previous year, uh, resulting in uh, a budgeted amount of $56,446,876. So with no further uh, discussion, I ask uh, that with a show of hands, 
Those in favor, um, vote aye. Aye. Okay. Those in favor, I'm sorry, those opposed, please with a show of hands, um, vote nay. Okay, uh, nays have it. So um, I'd, I'd be glad to consider uh, another motion. I'll make another motion for 3%. Fifty-five million nine hundred and nineteen thousand four hundred and sixty-four thousand dollars. Second. So we have a, a motion and a second on the floor. Um, I'd be glad to entertain discussion. Okay. So um, no discussion. Um, I just want to point out that the motion on the floor um, is for a increase of 3% from the previous year uh, for the Bristol Warren Regional School District budget, resulting in a, a to total budgeted amount of $55,919,464,000. That amount uh, represents um, a reduction from the proposed budget of $527,412. Uh, so again, the motion is to fund um, an increase of 3% resulting in a reduction to um, the school district's budget of $527,412. So is there any discussion on this motion? Uh, no discussion. Uh, those in favor, uh, with a show of hands, please aye. say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, those um, opposed, please with a show of hands, say nay. Okay. Nay make a it. motion to, I'd like to make a motion. Go, Tim. Councilman Sweeney, please make a motion. So first of all, over the years since 2010, we have been experiencing a loss of state aid due to the funding formula change. Due to that change and the court decision, Bristol it was responsible for an additional $2.8 million last year. This has had a significant financial impact on our town. But we have taken steps and we have made great strides to work with our partners in Warren. And it is fair to say that we, we both care very deeply about education and the Bristol Warren School Department. It's hard to look at this request for the school budget and not want to fully support that. I want you all to understand that. But we also have to recognize our towns are not the same as Barrington. We have different tax bases and socioeconomic backgrounds. And it's, an import and it's important to me personally that I am sure to, to all my colleagues that all working families, including single parents, low-income households, as well as folks aging in their homes on fixed incomes, can afford to live here, and that we can consider them and the financial impact in our decisions that we might have tonight. Due to all these factors, I think it's important that we find some common ground and a compromise. So with that, I'm going to move to increase the Bristol Warren Regional School District's local contribution to thirty-eight million sixty-eight thousand four hundred and sixty-seven. So, uh, Councilman Sweeney, can you clarify um, what the uh, budget request to the uh, school district that you're proposing? Two percent, thirty-eight million sixty-eight thousand four hundred and sixty-seven. My motion. Uh, again, I need some clarification, whereas uh, the school budget request is $56 million. Um, the, uh, I'm not quite sure. What, what percent increase in the prior years in dollar amount to the school district are you proposing? Oh, okay. So it would be $55,376,500. Okay, thank you, Councilman Sweeney. We have a motion. Uh, do we have a second? Okay, we have a second for discussion. Um, the floor is open for discussion. Councilwoman Perella. No, I'll second. Oh. And I think it's the, I think as our town administrator pointed out and Councilman Sweeney did a very good job, we are trying very, very hard to keep Bristol as affordable as we can to as many people as we can. We have had tremendous outlay of, of, of money over the last year into education. Um, 
and we paid them. I mean, you know, like if you want to move forward, we all want to move forward. I'm not trying to relive that. I'm just saying that that's a fact. We paid lots and lots and lots of money. Um, and so I think that this is, um, as, our, as our administrator pointed out, a moderate increase, and we know that we'll have to continue working on this for, for the future. I'd like to amend the motion to two and a half percent. That would be fifty-five million six hundred forty-eight thousand eleven dollars. Correct. And I made an amendment. And if someone seconds it, the amendment motion will carry. Second. Okay. So we have um, a seconded, amended motion. Any is there discussion? Okay. So wait, this this vote is just on the amendment. Correct. Is that correct. No. No, a, sec a seconded motion, a second amended motion, now the motion is amended. So we're not taking a vote on the amendment. Well, I've never heard of that. No, I think, I think uh, Chairman uh, DePasquale, um, the amended motion as seconded would require a majority vote um, to be carried forth as uh, the uh, amended motion. So um, well, we have no legal representation here. This is another oh. shortfall. Oh, I've never heard of that. I mean, we've always heard an amendment, and then you take a vote on the amendment, and then if it pa if the amendment passes, then the, you take a vote on the whole picture. If the amendment passes, the whole picture just passed. No, you're saying that you're not taking a vote on the no, amendment, and you're Trella. taking a vote on two points. Yep. Mr. Chairman, yep. these are Robert's yep. Rules of Order. I mean, uh, are we actually sitting up here? Yep. I, I think this yep. is political grandstanding and what's taking oh, yeah. place is, is disingenuous okay. of what's taking place here tonight. Okay, please, committee members. Chairman De Pasquale, you have an amended motion that's been seconded, right? Councilman Sweeney, you have a motion that you've made, a 2% increase. Councilman, Chairman De Pasquale, would you consider taking a vote on um, the motion as presented? Or you want to take a vote on the motion as it's seconded and amended? I was in college 30 years ago. Yeah. Robert's rules is not as fresh in my mind as it was, I believe that an amendment to a motion is seconded and then it's voted on. Yes, but it's voted on and if it fails, then we're back to the motion Correct. as presented. Exactly. So be glad to vote on the motion as amended and seconded, right? But and I have never, ever heard of this in my life. And I would ask my, co my legislative colleagues if they've ever heard of that. I've never heard of it. And I've been doing this in various venues for a long time. If you vote, you want, if I want to make an amendment, I present the amendment. The amendment is to go to 2.5. If you, if you, that would be the amendment. You take a vote on going to 2.5, that would be the amendment. Then you take a vote on the whole motion. That's correct. And that's what that's we were going to do. Saying. Right, that's what he's saying. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that we're going to vote okay, on okay. the amended motion, and upon it's, not an it's, amended motion. it's an amendment, not an amended motion. It's, a, an, it's amendment. an amendment. Okay, we're voting on the amendment, Councilwoman Torella. Okay. I, I, I'm just going to say I'm not going to take a vote on this for the sole principle, Mr. Chairman, that the person who made the original motion has to amend his motion. Yes. Uh, no, council, council, but I'm council. not going to get into it. And no, maybe, no, maybe no. we should bring up at the joint finance, this is why we should pay for legal counsel, right? Because that, that was brought up in the past. This is going down a, a road that we should have never went down. Okay, so yeah, I'd, li I'd like to, um, I'd like to uh, take a pause, yeah. okay? And um, I'd like to take a vote on the amendment. I'd like to take a pause for five minutes, okay? And then we can, re we can re reconvene and um, take further action. Okay, so I, I just need a motion to take a five-minute recess. I'll move. Second. Second. All in no, favor? I'm, All right, okay. I'm opposed to that. I think we should do it. You can't. You can't. You have to do it as an amendment. An amendment, not you an amended motion. motion. There's no.
many men is what you wrote up. Okay, may I have everyone's attention? We are going to um, re reconvene. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you for your patience. Um, what we have is a motion on the floor from Councilman Sweeney uh, for a 2% increase to the school budget, um, which has been seconded. Subsequently, we have an amendment, which has been seconded, uh, for uh, a 2.5% increase to the school budget. So what I'd like to do first is take a vote on the amendment to increase the Bristol Warren Regional School District budget by 2.5%. So those in favor, with a show of hands, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, please raise their hands. Vote nay. 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 Opposed, okay. Okay, now we have on the floor a motion to increase the funding from previous years for the Bristol One Regional School District by 2%, resulting in a budgeted amount of $55,376,557. Uh, that represents a reduction from the proposed budget of $1,000,000 $70,319. So that is the motion on the floor which has been seconded. Uh, if there's any discussion, I'd like to hear it. Otherwise, I'd like to bring this to a vote. Uh, I'm sorry, but we, we cannot at this, at this moment. Uh, I'd like to um, move this uh, motion to a vote. So uh, for all those that are uh, in fav favor, please with a show of hands, vote aye. 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 For those that are opposed, show of hands, vote nay. Okay, I have it. Um, I'd like to just um, take a moment to talk about where we are. And uh, I believe where we are is... Uh, so, I believe that... This increase um, to the school budget of 2% is moving the conversation in the right direction. Um, I believe that this committee has been making significant progress over the past several weeks on having a discussion that involves all parties. I believe that there's a lot um, of distance to go to a point where we can um, look at our action tonight and how it affects next year. I think tonight's action will have significant impacts on how the schools are funded for next year and the year after that. And I'd like to ask that the committee um, consider setting a meeting date um, in July, um, or committing to a meeting date in July where we can talk about actions we can take to further have facilitated conversations around uh, getting to a point where we have better level of comfort, if necessary, with our school budget, uh, understanding better the financial uh, accounting principles used within the school budget and how they align or don't align with our municipal budget practices. I do believe um, uh, Councilwoman Perella's statement around the timing of this budget does need to be addressed. This meeting tonight and last, meet last night's meeting um, is identical to the timing of uh, previous years. Um, so there has been no changes, but that doesn't mean that it's correct. And I do believe that um, significant efforts need to be made so that we can work towards coming up with an alignment of budgets between our municipalities, both our uh, neighboring communities, as well as the school district. So uh, I'd like to um, ask for a motion from this committee that um, we will uh, set a meeting date in July and continue the conversation to ensure that we take steps um, and entertain um, engaging facilitator uh, to uh, help us ask the right questions, digest the answers and how to act upon those answers so that we can work towards solving what I think is a three to five year problem over a three to five year period, not over a one year, two year budget cycle. So. Um, I'd like my uh, committee members' thoughts on that and um, also entertain a motion to that effect. Mr. Chairman, if I may, 
Um, thank you for your efforts. I know we had many discussions throughout. Uh, thank you for the uh, additional meetings. And I think we did make some advancements throughout this year uh, towards the right direction. And I'll, I'll commend the parents once again for their engagement. And I would like to see them more involved uh, in more meetings on top of our discussions last year of the additional meetings. But with that said, thank you for your efforts. But I think before that discussion, uh, would you entertain the formal uh, motion uh, as specified for record? I believe, do we have to do that? Well, I believe um, by the enabling legislation, what we're asked to do this evening is one thing, very simple, to approve a budget. Um, I think the motion as it stands, um, which was to approve a budget of $55,376,557 is sufficient to fulfill our obligation as the Joint Finance Committee as laid out in the enabling legislation. So I do know that in the past, I recognize in the past there has been a motion um, that has broken out um, the local aid, uh, local contributions between the two towns and state aid. Um, so uh, I'd be glad to um, hear that if you'd like to um, lay it out in that manner. Um, but again, I don't feel that um, it's necessary. Would it be helpful to clarify each town's um, share? Um, again, I, I don't know if um, I have um, the ability to. Um, I can do that. The motion that was made was a total budget of $55,376,557. The breakdown, the summary operation cost of $52,812,907 with a debt service of $2,563,650. That's a total authorization of $55,376,557. That breakdown is authorization of non-local aid of $17,308,090 and authorization of local aid of $38,068,467. I believe that is the breakdown. And then from there, uh, the breakdown between the communities, please bear with me. Thank you. Uh, Bristol's portion of that is $26,495,653. Warren's portion of that is $11,572,814. And I'll second that motion. Well, I think that was meant to be a clarification of the motion. I, I do acknowledge that that is consistent with uh, the motion that was made, seconded, and voted upon. Uh, but for uh, belts and suspenders, if you'd like, uh, I'd be glad to um, would, would you prefer we take another vote on that? Okay. So then I'd like to just um, acknowledge uh, Chairman Calero's breakdown of the numbers, which um, I do agree, agree with and are consistent with uh, my calculations as the official mo motion from tonight's meeting. So thank you for doing that, uh, Chairman Calero. Um, again, uh, back to you. Councilman Stewart, um, I didn't know if you had any further discussion um, as follow-up. Just um, to your point about the meetings, the sooner the better. Obviously, we have budget, um, and with the scheduling uh, between the two towns, I think um, that's the most important thing. So on the horizon, I, I think we should just um, transfer the dates and schedule way ahead of even um, November of next year, or of this year, I should say. Thank you, Councilman. I do anticipate, and although uh, I will refrain from having us get out, all get out our calendars, um, that we will do something uh, this summer. Uh, with, um, as far as meeting to discuss and move this um, challenging discussion forward, I did want to make one last comment uh, regarding uh, the, two, the two words that we um, heard very often over the last meeting and tonight's meeting, and that was both prioritize education and fully fund. Um, I do believe um, that you could, um, sort of my personal opinions on the, the, the amount that was funded tonight, you can prioritize education without fully funding. Um, and I think you can fully fund without prioritizing education. And I think that what I feel strongly about um, is 
a committee that sits before you tonight that um, has taken an action which, although not fully funded, is committed to prioritizing education by looking at, most importantly, how the action tonight and previous year's actions affect what we are going to be faced with in years to come. And I think that, first and foremost, is how we prioritize education and um, get these communities um, on the track so that we can continue to hear fantastic, exciting, inspirational uh, feedback from students like Rider Fair. So I appreciate um, all of your um, attendance tonight and thoughtful deliberation um, and your patience with my um, maybe not so fresh skills with Robert's Rules. Um, but I appreciate that we were able to get through tonight um, as, as one school district. So with that, I'd be glad to entertain one motion final to motion. Second. Motion to second. All in favor?